A perfect year, a perfect series. Now the title was tantalizingly close. But what about these angels? They've had so many rallies this year, so many late inning heroics. Do they have another one left in them? Four to nothing Giants trying to wrap up the World Series tonight. Ortiz carried a one hit shutout into the sixth. The Angels' outlook was bleak. But then Adam Kennedy singled, and a two out walk to Erstad gave Anaheim a ray of hope. Was Ortiz starting to swim upstream with salmon at the plate? Now he throws. Fastball. Strike three call. And so we head to the late innings. And the Angels are still four runs down. You know what? I, I was frustrated. And I walked out there thinking, you know what? We might have, you know, that might have been our opportunity to get back in the game. And uh, I think we gave up a run the next inning. A two out RBI hit by Kent, who pumps his fist. As he looks into the dugout on his way to first, it's five to nothing, San Francisco. Personally, like I said, I was frustrated and a little down, and I kind of thought that maybe uh, that was the end of it. But when I came in the dugout, I saw that the rest of the guys weren't thinking that, <laughs> so I was happy. But these angels didn't know the meaning of the word quit. We were down five nothing, but we knew if we had any outs left, we we're going to keep fighting. And in the seventh, they turned to their good luck charm. They put the rally monkey up on the scoreboard, and this place went berserk. The, the fans just go crazy seeing that thing, and it gives us a nice boost of adrenaline to go up there and, and uh, try to kick butt. The rally monkey has made several appearances, urging everybody to crank it up. And once again, facing Ortiz, that's precisely what they did. And then that inning, there were two balls that were smoked pretty good. We would say, man, it, you know, they're on with us. It's five to nothing. Uh, we were hoping we'd get him through that seven because we know Felix was, was running on empty. Everybody's running on empty. The dangerous Spezio coming up there was probably their hottest hitter and uh, decided to make the move. I think Here comes Dusty Baker. Dusty's had such great production from his late inning relievers, especially Felix Rodriguez. And they said we were going to go with Felix, and so I was like, all right, you know, I did everything I could for as long as I could. Everybody in our bullpen does such a tremendous job that it's like, how could you not feel good about bringing in, in one of the best, you know, right handed relievers? in the game. You know, we had to feel pretty good with the 5 nothing lead. Dusty Baker said, you deserve the game ball tonight. Russ Ortiz took the souvenir with him. I gave him the ball because I was reward for what he did. Some of the angels I heard took exception that I was showing them up, but they weren't even in the equation. It was about showing Russ appreciation. It wasn't anything besides a souvenir, something a keepsake, because who knows, this could be my only World Series that, that I ever participate in. Ortiz had his memento. And in the Giants' clubhouse, preparations were underway. After all, they had a five-run lead with just eight outs to go. Felix Rodriguez was on to pitch with two men on base. Gloss at second, Fulmer at first, one out in the seventh inning. This is a big at-bat for Scott Spezio. I know it was a huge at-bat when I was coming up there. I was preparing myself. Uh, to drive in a run any way possible. I knew we needed a spark, uh, and I knew we needed a run on the board. It was a tough at bat. He's been tough on me the whole series. Rodriguez delivers, and it's a fastball outside. I think I took two pitches uh, that were real close, and then I fouled off uh, four of them that were outside. He, he just would not come in. You can see Santiago wanted that fastball in. That's a dangerous area right now. If you make a mistake away, it's a single. If you make a mistake inside, it's five to three. The 3-2 pitch is belted to right field. I knew it would have a chance, but uh, it felt like a half hour going down to first base, and I was praying, go out, please, God, let it go out somehow. Going back, Sanders, the warning track. Uh, you know, I was standing on first base. I don't think I've done that in my whole career where I'm actually standing on first base waiting for the ball to go out. To the wall, and it's gone! We knew that was the one thing we needed to get us back on track. And, you know, Spees came up big for us all year long, and right there was the biggest moment. 
you know, when Speeds hit that home run, it was like, you, know, you kind of get that sensation, like, oh, man, maybe this is the start of it. And I was like, man, that one, that one was, uh, I mean, that was huge. I mean, to me, that might have turned the, the whole series around because anything other than that three-run homer, or even a single or whatever, you know, they're still not within prime striking distance. I'll tell you, if somehow, some way, they did come back and win this game, what kind of momentum would they have going into tomorrow? But tomorrow wouldn't matter if the Giants weren't held at bay. In the eighth, Brendan Donnelly was once again masterful. He struck out Sanders. Then with Bell, it remained a two-run game. Now, it was the Angels' turn. Tim Worrell would face the meat of the order. The big bats coming up for Anaheim in the bottom of the eighth. Ortiz had held the first four batters hitless, but that trend would quickly come to an end with one swing of the bat by Erstad. There's a swing, a long drive deep to right, has a chance, it is gone! Darren Erstad with a home run, it is a one-run game! There is nothing you can say, you just have to admire the tenacity of the Anaheim Angels. Now down by one, the rally was kept alive by center. A drive into center field. Lofton can't get it. Base hit. And the tying run is on base. Here comes Sean Biggins to run for Salmon. Two straight hits. Why not three? And Anderson would deliver. Pop down the left field line. A long run for Bonds. He won't get to it. Biggins to third base. Bonds stumbles and falls. The mistake by Bonds was costly, and Worrell was done for the night. It all came down to Troy Gloss against Rob Nen, an historic comeback on the line. I mean, I, I don't have a whole lot of experience racing Rob Nen. I mean, we all know what he throws, but seeing it from the perspective of being in the box compared to the camera in center field is a whole different story. Giants are hoping that Nen could work some of that magic again right here. I was, just, I was trying to get a pitch. I could basically just hit on the ground, get something to score one run, tie the ball game up, and then go on from there. The never say die Angels giving their fans a thrill down the stretch. Laws trying to get the hit that could possibly send us back here tomorrow. And it's belted! Tiroy has a knack of coming through in game-winning situations. He's done it all year long, and for him to come up there and drive that pitch out to the wall, we were all just thrilled because we knew we had Percy coming in for the ninth. <laughs> and Percy showed no mercy. Troy Percival comes on to try and nail this one down. Two and two pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck it out. Playable. Loss. Two. The Angels are one out away from sending it to a game seven tomorrow when they looked like they were dead and buried tonight. And the Giants faced with a very real prospect that their best chance to win this World Series has come and gone. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung out and missed. We're seeing them all night. And the Anaheim Angels are still breathing. We are going to game seven incredibly. Six to five, the Angels have defeated the Giants with an incredible comeback in the late innings. Well, what was on the line with us as far as facing elimination in that series, uh, I don't think I've ever been involved in a more exciting ballgame. 